Let's talk a little bit about supply and the variables of supply. Once again, it really helps a lot if we think about the people who represent supply. So these are producers. These are, we're going to take off our consumer hats right now. We're used to thinking about things in terms of being a consumer, because all of us are consumers. But very few of us are actually producers. So this is the challenge in this chapter is for you to think like a producer. So here are our producers. They are not trying to save you money, you as a consumer. They're not trying to save consumer money. They have an overriding incentive, and that overriding incentive is to maximize their profits. And all of the variables of supply are related to maximizing profits. So if you think of profits in a really simple way in this course, we try to keep things simple as much as possible. And profits are revenues minus costs. And that gives us profits. So all of the variables of supply are related either to increasing or decreasing revenues or increasing or decreasing costs. So it's helpful to think about them that way. All right, so suppliers have a set of resources. Think about a farmer. A farmer has land. They have equipment. They have a labor force. They have technology and know-how. They have all of these things, and they want to put them to work and they want to grow is the best food that they can and as much of it. They want to be really productive using their resources. If the way they're using their resources is not working for them, if they're trying to grow coffee plants in Georgia or anywhere in the United States except for Hawaii, it's just not going to work. If you're trying to grow cotton in New York State, that's just not going to work either. Okay, so any business has resources, and, and the whole point of running a business is to maximize profits and is to use those resources in the best way available to maximize their resources. All right, so let's get this out of the way. And now we're going to look at the variables of supply, and we'll look at input prices first. Input prices are all about the cost of producing. Inputs are the costs. If you think about a, let's move these little guys over here. If you think about a plywood plant or something like that, you have, um, you know, here's your plant, and um, a plywood plant uses logs out in the log yard. And so these things are all being fed into the plant and to go through the process. Out the other end comes your plywood. So these are inputs here. In a plywood plant, inputs are logs, glue, labor, all of the equipment and machinery. Those are the inputs. And this is your output, your final product. And so um, input prices are all about the cost of this, of your raw materials and things like that. So let's move that out of the way. So as input prices increase, then the supply of that product decreases. Why is that? Because producers have options. They can do other things with their resources. They can, I kind of think of it as playing a game. They can take their marbles and go play some other game. So if the cost of logs has gone up, they're going to, they're going to or let's say the cost of um, yellow pine has gone up then they're going to produce some other kind of product that doesn't use yellow pine. And what happens to the supply of yellow pine plywood? Well, it goes down because the cost of yellow pine has gone up. So input prices uh, vary inversely with supply. As the input prices go up, the supply of the related product goes down. The next variable is technology. And this is also pretty common sense. Uh, as technology improves, 
processes become more efficient, producers can produce more using fewer resources, and so as technology improves, you have new technology, you have an increase in the supply of that product. So you have a direct relationship, mathematically speaking, between technology and supply. And remember, if we're thinking about a supply curve, upward sloping, a supply curve shifting out will move to the right. So here we had S1 and now S2. Okay, so uh, input prices going down would actually shift out a supply curve. Technology coming into the picture, new technology, would shift the supply curve out. Okay, let's look at the next one. Number of sellers, that's pure math. Just uh, the quantity supplied is going to be based on the number of sellers. If for some reason you have some new sellers in the in this market, they think they're going to make a lot of profit. They they look at the market and they think all of those producers are making so much money, I can do this too and I want to make a lot of money. So you see new sellers come into a market usually where there's profits being made. So number of sellers is also an increase in the number of sellers is going to increase supply. And then expectations. So producers have expectations about what's going to happen in the future with their product. If they think the price is going up in the future, then they will withhold, they will they'll kind of tuck away some of their supply of their inventory and they'll hold on to it, they'll warehouse it. Um, to hold on to it for the future when the prices go up and then they'll try to sell it in the future when the price gets higher. So the supply today will decrease. So if the expectation is for prices to rise in the future, then the supply of that good today decreases. We see that in coffee in Brazil when uh, you know the, the government of Brazil is involved in the coffee market. Brazil is the largest coffee producer in the world. And if the price is considered to be too low, then the government will stockpile green coffee. And they'll, um, they'll just warehouse it until prices go up. And then when prices go up, they'll start to sell that coffee out of the warehouse. Uh, so we see that happening um, all over the world with um, expectations of future prices.